Hi, today's video is going to show you a little bit about how easy it is to set up a video wall in Ventus. So in order to do that, we need a video wall, which we have here. And this is our test setup that we use for testing all of our synchronization and stuff like that. Um, obviously, this is not the entire video wall because this is only one screen and that would be largely inefficient for testing purposes. So what we have is one screen, but we have a large Velcro wall. And on the back of our screens, we've attached Velcro so we can tear them off, put them up, move them around very easily without needing to screw things onto the wall every single time. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, uh, set up a hardware video wall. So we're going to attach our screens up into a nice 4 by 3 arrangement and then we'll connect up the computer. So let's do that first. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but we're just testing it here anyway and showing you how to do it. Obviously, if we were doing a real wall, we'd come in and do it properly with precision engineering. Down here you'll see the machines. So uh, it's three V-boxes. These are standard workstation class hardware. You can use your own workstations if you prefer. Um, we're using up, and we need to now set uh, connect the cables. Um, so if we look at the back uh, down here you'll see here we have the frame lock cables uh, that are sort of arranged in a, a star pattern. So the central machine is the master and then the uh, top and bottom are um, driving off that from the frame locks. And then here we have the network cables uh, that keeps the boxes uh, synchronized at a uh, Ventus level. So the boxes are communicating uh, via the network. And then of course we have the video cables. And if you're in a studio environment and we need the whole thing gen lock, then again we would just plug in the house sync to this uh, gen lock port on the middle machine right there. Okay, so let's uh, set them up. Okay, so now we've gone in, we've uh, set up the hardware, we've connected all the screens, and we've gone into the video card drivers and set up an Ifinity or a Mosaic mode uh, to span across the screens for each machine individually. So what we now have, and you can see behind me, uh, we have three rows, uh, each which is one complete Windows desktop setup. They're of course all frame lock and stuff hardware wise. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to just go in and tell Ventus to set up the cluster. So how do we do that? Uh, one of the things that we've done actually is uh, we've gone in and made uh, mosaic or Ifinity groups uh, for each of the three machines. So you'll see we'll be able to uh, read that out directly. So this is the Ventus configuration editor that I have right here. Um, what you can see that's interesting up here in the right corner at the top, we have a drop down menu. And this will actually find all of the Ventus machines running in the network that it can find and it will group them together according to group IDs and machine IDs. So this is actually the cluster, it's in the same group, that's group 3. Um, it's running a, or each machine is running a Ventus machine service on it that allows us to find and detect and configure and uh, address each machine uh, in the network. So I've uh, grabbed this group here and we can see that there's all the possibilities for configuration. What I want to do is I want to change the layout configuration for rendering on multiple outputs. So. If I look at this, what I'm actually on, I'm just going to switch it to none and what I'm going to actually do is just add or create a new configuration and I'm going to call this a uh, 4 by 3 video wall. Okay, so we say okay. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go in and it's going to address the machines uh, and it's reading out the configuration that is described by Ifinity or Mosaic mode um, and it's telling Ventus exactly how the screens are aligned. You can see here there's uh, three machines. That's our three machines in our cluster and I can move them around. There we go. Oops, grab the machine, not the uh, displays. So I can move these around and I can uh, configure them. Let's zoom in a little bit. I can even take one display and move it around and create the video wall like that. We'll show you that later with uh, our actual content. So this here is now uh, three machines and I can turn off those uh, bold outlines. So this, we're just treating the whole video wall, regardless of where the machines are, as one screen space. And now what I need to do is I need to put a uh, bezel compensation in there. So I'm just going to use uh, shift and the cursor keys. And you can see over here on the right side it says 50. And I know the space is about 140 pixels. Uh, we can obviously do some uh, calculations exactly how many pixels per inch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I know it's 140 in both directions. So now I've actually set up the screen space um, entirely for the whole cluster. Every machine, 
And here, if I turn that back on, every machine knows exactly what it's rendering for which output. So I just hit save. Now it's uploading that configuration to the entire cluster. And now the entire cluster is rendering in the correct uh, aspect ratio with bezel compensation and all of the configuration. I'm just going to start up Director. There we go. So Director has now started. And I'm going to pick a project. We'll just go with our hockey because that has some nice things. Now what you'll notice is it's now going to start on the video wall. There we go. It's starting all the machines, starting Ventus runtimes on the machines. Really important about this is that normally you would want to have identical hardware for a video wall. In this case, actually you saw they started at different times. That's because one of the machines is a little bit slower than the others. In this case, it doesn't matter because Ventus is keeping everything synchronous. But if you have differing performances, you can have to run into issues, especially with things like video playback and that sort of thing. So you really want to keep the performance of the machines identical, although Ventus will correct for that um, as much as is possible. So I'm just going to add some teams in here just so that we have our data populated. And we'll just do the Hamburg Eagles. There we go. So now I want to set up a graphic that I'm ready to take. So I'm just going to go into here to my pages and I'm going to grab a start lineup. There we go. It's already pre-populated. It's loading the scene, getting ready for it to fire. You can see it in the preview in the correct aspect ratio. And you can see here that it'll actually show you where the bezels are uh, colored slightly differently. So you can see immediately which parts are going to be visible, which not adjust for um, visibility issues. I'm going to take that on air and you'll see on the video screen the minute I take it on air, there it goes. There's take one. And then we'll just do a take two. And then we'll do a take three. There you go. And that's automatically frame synchronized, frame locked, um, gen locked, everything uh, in there. So if I take another different one, and let's just take a background image. And I just load that up. You can see immediately it's doing a take and adjusting for the scene, whatever. Okay. So now let's uh, just see a different project just to compare and contrast. I'm just going to open up the uh, slideshow project here. You can see that it closes down on the wall. It opens up a new runtime, so it's refreshing automatically. It's controlling my cluster. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load this in here, get a movie file, for example. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a take. And you can see it starts up. And it's now playing a video clip synchronously across all 12 screens in a preview mode on my laptop and on the video wall in full resolution. So as you saw, it's pretty easy to set up a video wall in Ventus. I mean, there's not a lot to it. You know, of course, you need to go in and set up the hardware and all of that sort of thing, hang screens. But in principle, once you've done that, the software is uh, really, really foolproof and, and straightforward. So now, the interesting part about this is because this is all done real time and all it's a, it's a real time engine, we can start changing the configuration in the same way that we did to set it up. So let's just try uh, hanging some screens somewhere else and see how long it takes us to adjust the scene to run in a completely different video wall environment. Okay, so as you can see, we've uh, tore our wall apart and made some holes in it. So now we need to fix that. Best way to go is go into our Ventus configuration editor again find our cluster. There it is. This is our cluster. And let's just edit our video wall layout. There we go. So this is our video wall layout. We can see there's the screens. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take this guy and drag him down and take this one and just drag him down. We can actually just configure all of the screens manually like that, dragging them around. And I'm just going to hit save. That doesn't look quite right to me, but okay. And you can see as soon as I hit saved, it now updated the screen playing live to the new video wall setup. Doesn't get much easier than that, really, does it? So, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we'll be doing more videos in the future.